What's up everybody, I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is Irate Reviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions and let you know whether it's something to go back to the comic book shop for or not. So make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I'm going to be talking about right now is the big one of the week and that is The Batman Who Laughs. So this is the conclusion of all the original one shots for these individual characters that are showing up and making life a living hell for a lot of our favorite superheroes. So when it comes to these Dark Knights, essentially we have Barbatos that is kind of this giant figurehead at the top of this real source of the power and then the Batman who laughs could be considered his general his first in command that is taking control of all the troops that are moving out which is the Red Death the Merciless the Devastator all those kind of different characters but let's dive into the actual origin story of the Batman who laughs when we start off with the story of the Batman Who Laughs, it's essentially a big fourth wall break where we see, or at least we feel, like the Batman Who Laughs is talking directly to us. So he is talking about all the things that we currently expect. He's basically speaking to every comic book reader's understanding of current continuity or how comic books function. You know, you've got this beacon of hope in Superman. You've got this woman, this this queen of the Amazons. You've got Batman, the original, the, the man that overcomes the great odds and brings hope to other individuals. And really what it comes down to is there's a different kind of card, a Joker card card that brings chaos to what could be this perceivable order. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Immediately we jump into the flashback of the previous, you know, many years ago when we're talking about Earth-22. And in this Earth we see an orchestrated destruction of Gotham. Basically a systematic killing of every single person, every single member of this city. The city itself is dying on the vine. And we see the Joker introduce himself as this kind of psychopathic maniac who's already taken his task to Jim Gordon, you know, and who's basically kept some keepsakes. The badge that he shot him through, his pipe, his glasses, his coat, as he talks about how he dissolved Jim Gordon and his family. So next thing that we see is we know that Batman is now incapacitated, but the key points of this is that the Joker knows that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person. He keeps alternating between calling him Batman and be calling him, you know, Bats and, and calling him Bruce. And then we see their destination is Crime Alley, where the Joker pulls out a family, you know, a single girl and her two parents, and then immediately starts to look at them, pulls out a gun, and pops both of the parents in the head, leaving this girl devastated and then now exposed to this kind of Joker toxin. And then ultimately ultimately converting into this very rabid and ravenous Joker disciple that goes running out into the night to cause more terror and confusion, and then proceed to see not necessarily every single murder that happens, but these blams that line behind Batman just insinuate that there's so much more death and destruction that's coming to these families that are lined up. And then finally, Batman breaks free, calls out the Joker, and the Joker says, I will never stop. I will never stop until you... And then as the Batman is just beating him to the pulp, we finally see this final tooth drop as Batman grabs him by the neck and you hear a crack as the Joker ceases to be. Releasing this kind of toxic gas, this almost nerve agent, that we finally fa you know, fast forward two more days and we see Batman up on a catwalk above all these young children that have been infected with a Joker toxin that have been kind of corralled into this warehouse district. And he's talking to Superman about, you know, I'm not sorry for what I did, but I'm not going down that slippery slope. And Superman is totally fine with that because he's Batman's best friend. Clark is super, is, you know, is Bruce's best friend. And we, we kind of get the insinuation of exactly what's going to be going on. They're going to bring these kids to treatment. It's just like, hey, the, you know, I'm going to be handling everything together because the last kid you know, tried to bite the, uh, the therapist's neck out. And then you get a little ha from Batman. And you know that something is awry. You had, an insin you had an idea, but now you know that something's awry with the situation. Then we dive right into the Bat family. They're currently training on these Robin robots that are giving them a really hard time. And then they finally confront Batman about this and he tells them the truth that he was infected with a neurotoxin, and that ultimately the Bat family just wants to dive in and help him. They want to bring back the Bruce Wayne that they know. And he's like, yeah, no, I, I invited you here for a reason. They're like, of course, we would help you, whatever. And he's just like, I'm not here to, I'm not inviting you here to help. I'm inviting you because you're the first people that would find out that something's amiss and just unloads on them, killing every member of his own family. It's just, it's a brutal scene that, to take in. And then you've got Superman with a, blood streaming from his eyes in space. Hawkman is outside the window suffocating in space. There's a, a rib cage here, there's a flash there, there's a Martian Manhunter that basically looks like some sort of eradicated plant that's growing out of things. There's all kinds of devastation and destruction surrounding Superman and then you have a more Joker-like Batman bringing out Lois and Jonathan Kent, John's eyes bleeding from the sockets, and this black kryptonite in his hand that he tosses to Superman that causes him to rip his family to shreds. 
as he draws a, a lovely little Joker face on the moon from the, the space station, the Justice League Watchtower. And then we finally see the introduction, uh, basically knowing that he has raised the entire world around him, burned it to ash at his feet, sitting atop a throne of skulls with all these Robin, you know, <laughs> surrounding him. It's, it's interesting to see Barbados approach him and then provide him with the context that he needs, showing him the, the turmoil that is the dark multiverse. And he's bewitched by the beauty of it, bewitched by the chaos and the death that surrounds it. And then finally, Earth Zero, the prime universe where he can kind of go and face off with Batman, the Batman, the original Batman. And that's huge. And then ultimately, what he can bring with him. As we continue to talk to these, you know, this character, talk to the camera, we are shown the true nature of what's going to be happening. This, what awaits on the other side of the dark gate, and that is all the variations. And then we dip back into where we're talking about, you know, what really it meant. You know, the, the Joker itself is, was, you know, he wasn't necessarily something that was straight and narrow. He was potential. And the Joker always referred to this Batman as the Bat King, you know, ruling over his dark kingdom. And the king has power. So when you take Batman and combine him with the Joker, you have power and you have potential. And then with that ability to laugh off the restrictions, now you have something that's truly devastating. And who can withstand the might of the combination of the Joker's madness, chaos, and lack of regard for pretty much everything else with the methodical planning and you know brilliance of Bruce Wayne's Batman. And that's why he is so sure of his success. The heroes are on their ropes. You know, they have this small grasp of hope, but he's already won. He's insinuating that the game is already over and you're just wondering why. And that's where we talk about the story because this is basically Scott Snyder and James Tynan saying, we already have an out, you know, an outcome, but you guys are guessing. There's a mystery. You think that everything's over. You, you go through all the tropes. You go through all the standard, you know, pieces of comic book reading, but we're going to fool you. And it's just a matter of how we're going to do it this time. And when we go into it, you know, there's so much potential when it comes to the dark multiverse as well as the stories they can tell inside the dark multiverse that if we go back into just this one single shot, this two-page spread, we can identify so many different characters that you would be tremendous battles for a lot of our heroes. If we take a look at this, we have an undead Abin Sur with a Green Lantern ring floating inside of his head. There's a, another kind of like almost Parallaxian uh, you know, Green Lantern that's sitting there as well. It's, it's insane. We have a parasite version of Superman. We have a dark side Superman or Lex Luthor that is kind of, you know, it's Lex Luthor turned into, you know, this dark side because he's using, utilizing the mother box and the source wall. And he's being corrupted by that kind of stuff. Martian Manhunter is this nasty red aura around. There's an executioner version of Wonder Woman floating in the background. A dark death metal kind of cyborg Superman that is floating towards the foreground. Cheetah as a combination of Wonder Woman that's kind of sitting there next to that parasite Superman. A demonic version of Dr. Fate off to the right hand side. Some sort of flash beast in the upper right hand corner but there's also this kind of you know cybernetic spider version of flash that's kind of toward the midsection you've got this mutated undersea version of aquaman that looks to be like a nightmare on him on his own there's power girl there's black canary there's a man bat in the background uh, some sort of slender batman up towards the top of the the screen and then you've got you know a mr freeze and a captain cold kind of thing going on in there as well but there's just so many different potential pieces and there's all these figures in the dark shadowy background that you can't can't help but wonder where it's really going to go. That basically just sums up everything. You know, as you can tell by just talking about it, I really enjoyed this. It's not like what I it's not what I was expecting. What this is is saying, "Hey, we have so much we can do and we want to we want to totally screw with you guys. So sit back and enjoy the ride." It gives you the origin, it gives you this very dark and twisted methodical version of a Joker that is completely unhinged, un, un, unfettered by any kind of consequences that just takes this sadistic approach to his final joke, the breaking of the Batman, and what it does to Batman afterwards. When he's exposed to this kind of neurological toxin, these, these, these really serious issues, and then it's kind of realizing his final greatest fear and how evil that turns him. So I, I can't, I gotta, I gotta recommend it. You gotta, you gotta read it. It's just... It's just, you've got to read it. Uh, Riley Rosmo's art is fantastic. It's very brutal in a lot of places, but it's just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta, you gotta read this comic book. It is definitely a recommendation for me. You just 
can't help but take it in. So uh, those are my comments. Those are my thoughts. I just rambled on and on about it for like 10 minutes. So I want to know what you guys think. Hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.